Many of you have been asking about an update as it relates to the Firefly 6 and doing a fully autonomous mission and I was so close to getting this video shot at the field the other day. The weather was perfect, not very much wind, and I went to arm the Firefly 6 and I got the infamous Pixhawk buzzer sound that lets you know that it will not arm. And what I came to find out is that the AVA firmware on this Pixhawk had expired. I was running an old version and it turns out there's a updated firmware. So the lesson that I learned was the next time I decide to go to the field, I need to at least arm at home just to make sure that I can get everything going. And I could have done the firmware update in the field, but what I want to do is show you the process to save your parameters, update the firmware, load new parameters. Because you may be running a custom version of the APM firmware, maybe it's a uh, beta release, and you'll want to know how to do this. On the Bird's Eye View website, there is a info and downloads section, and you'll notice here that we're going to download the latest firmware, that's AVA 1.0.2. So that's actually not going to work with a left click. I'll go ahead and try a right click, save link as. I'll save it in my downloads folder as a PX4 file. The next thing I'll do is I'll load the Firefly 6 planner. Now this is just a very simplified version of mission planner specific to the Firefly 6. So the bird's eye view guys have done a lot of things to make this more relevant and compatible with their aircraft. So I've gone ahead and connected the USB cable to Pixhawk. Connect the other end to my PC. And I'll go ahead and select the COM port. Now all of this definitely applies to Mission Planner, so you can do this update in Mission Planner if you wanted to. See our home location on the map? I'm going to go to Setup, and what we'll do first before we actually update the firmware is we're going to save our parameters to our local computer just because we want to make sure we do that so we don't lose them. I'll click Save. We'll just overwrite these ones I did before, and I'll go ahead and replace that, hit OK. And if you're not aware, let me just show you what this file looks like. It's a long list of your existing parameters, line by line. We'll click on the Install Firmware. It'll tell us basically we need to disconnect. So I'm going to disconnect. Now you see we have the Load AVA Software button, and 1.02 is the latest version and it's erasing the existing version. You can see that it's going to start loading our new firmware. Pixhawk has rebooted. It tells us to wait 30 seconds before clicking OK. Let's go back to our main screen. I'll click Connect. The last thing we'll do is we'll go back to Setup, Parameter List, and I'll click the Load button. We'll load our parameters that we saved before and hit OK. Now that the parameters have been loaded from our file that we saved earlier, let me point out something that is crucial as it relates to this. This is something I wish I would have known when I first got started. So you can see parameter list here, and if I scroll down, you'll see that in this case, there's a green value. These values are actually the values that come from our parameter file, which are different than what the custom firmware load has. So it's important to know that now that these are loaded into Mission Planner, we actually need to write them to Pixhawk. So I'll go ahead and click Write Params. And now those have been updated. Everything's looking good. Now let me do what I should have done the other day when I tried to go do a mapping mission. I'll just test the forward flight transition. Looks good. We'll bring it back into Hover. Let me go ahead and engage our switch. You can hear this ESC's arm. Now let me go ahead and see if I can arm. Yep, I'll just give it a little throttle on the bench. Looks good. Flaps are working. Okay, so now it looks like we're ready to go out and fly a mission. So this week, the weather lets up. It's been quite windy lately. 
I'm going to get to the field and I'm going to do this. So thank you guys for the continued interest. This is a really fun setup to fly even if you're not doing any sort of autonomous work. Just wanted to share that firmware upgrade process. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.